There might be another wide receiver coming to the Dallas Cowboys. And honestly, I like the move. I'll tell you why. What is up, everyone? And welcome into ADZ Sports Dallas Primetime, a busy Wednesday for the Cowboys at the wide receiver position because as of this recording, the Cowboys have not signed Say Jones, but they did host him on a visit, a potential free agency addition for a team that could absolutely use the wide receiver depth. And there was a roster move that they made also in the aftermath of these reports about the visit that might suggest that the Cowboys might be making I might be willing to make the move. And I'm talking about the Cowboys releasing Martavis Bryant. Very recently, we talked about him potentially being a surprise member of the 53-man roster. That was if the Cowboys thought that he could turn the hands of time back and be that guy that was an absolute dude in the NFL in the first couple of years that he played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Cowboys don't seem to believe that that can be the case. They are moving on from Ortavis Bryant, opening up a roster spot, which, who knows, based on the position, could very well be for Say Jones. Now, if you're watching this video later on in the day or maybe on uh, a day later or something like that, and the Cowboys have already signed Say Jones, this is still a very valid and uh, not valid, but the current video is what I mean, because I'm going to get into why I believe Say Jones could actually be a very smart addition for the Cowboys. And I strongly believe he would be a strong addition for Dallas. Now, let's define strong, though. I'm not saying this is the only move that the Cowboys fans might have wanted back in January, back in February, March even. But this is a solid move that the Cowboys do like to make. Low risk, potentially high reward. And when you look at the worst case scenario and best case scenario of adding, say, Jones, you basically land on the following. Worst case, he's a veteran piece that you're adding for depth on a wide receiver room that is pretty damn thin and inexperienced. And what I mean by that is even though you've got a solid starting trio of C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks, and Jalen Tolbert at wide receiver three, Everyone else is very inexperienced. Everyone else seems to be a young guy, right? I'm talking about, I mean, there's Kevontae Turpin, who is more of a specialist and that will have a very specific role within the offense. But beyond him, Jalen Brooks, second-year guy who was drafted in the seventh round. Then you get Ryan Flournoy, who was picked this very year in the sixth round. Developmental guys at the end of the day. Who knows if Jalen Brooks is going to take that massive second-year leap to the point that, you are confident on him being a number four wide receiver or anything like that. I don't think that that is uh, something that Cowboys will be super sure of before training camp and before the preseason. Now, there's a problem with that because the Cowboys, sure, they are resetting financially. They're trying to put themselves in a position where they can pay Dak, CD, and Micah and maybe not pay a big-name free agent on the outside and while that is true, because they, it is true, they're resetting. Otherwise, it, they maybe would have kept Tyler Vyadish or Tyron Smith, or maybe they would have kept Stephon Gilmore, or maybe they would have done one more move. And I'm not even talking about uh, NFL-wide splash, but, you know, somebody that was more expensive than $3 million, which is something that they really have not done so far this offseason, in free agency at least. So while they are resetting... It's also a team that is expected to win ball games. So there's nothing wrong with trying to add that depth in case of an injury or in case somebody like Jalen Tolbert does in progress at the number three wide receiver spot. And I'm going to get into that deeper in a little bit. But for now, what I'm trying to say is it makes sense to add somebody like Jalen, like, like say Jones, in the sense of it's not a situation in which the Cowboys are just looking into the future now and they're hoping to develop Jalen Brooks and Ryan Flournoy, et cetera, and give them all of the reps because you're also trying to win ball games. So adding that additional veteran presence on the room should not be overlooked because this is not a rebuild year in which the Cowboys are not expected to win anything. They will win ball games. They will likely be in the playoffs. It will be likely late in the season that they're still in contention for the NFC East title. So 
they're not really throwing the towel ahead of the 2024 season at all. Another entirely different thing is if we don't think they're taking the next step in order to be a better playoff contender and a legitimate Super Bowl contender that can hold its own against the San Francisco 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles if they improve as they want to improve this offseason. I know that there's some question marks about the Eagles right now, but you know what I mean. We would like to see the Cowboys go all in. That is not happening. That doesn't mean, however, that adding Say Jones isn't a significant move in trying to keep or stay relevant in 2024. Now, worst case scenario, that's all his depth in case of an injury, depth in case Dylan Tolbert doesn't pan out. Best case scenario, he puts up a competition against Tolbert in the in the offseason. And this might be a reach, maybe. But also, Tolbert does have 24 career catches. So it's not like it's unimaginable that, say, Jones could come in and actually become the number three wideout after he's been an NFL veteran and he's going into his, his eighth season in the NFL. And he saw his best football in 2022 when he caught over 80 passes or over 800 yards with Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars who happens to be the best quarterback he's played with in the case of Trevor. I don't see this as an, an impossible possibility, basically, like having, say, Jones step up as a number three wide receiver. He has solid numbers. He doesn't have number one wide receiver numbers, but that is fine because that's not really what you're looking for. He did play only nine games, though, in 2023. Nine games played for 321 yards. But before that, it was 2022, as I said, 82 catches, 823 yards. He had five touchdowns in that span. Uh, drop rates, there's been some down seasons, but they've been pretty far in between. Like it was 2017 in Buffalo, and then it was 2020, I believe, with the Las Vegas Raiders when he had a lot of drops. But he's at like 6% career drop rate, which is very, very fair. And again, he would be somebody that maybe costs like $2 million or something like that at this stage of, of free agency. And he scored five touchdowns in 2022. He was asked to maybe take a step back in 2023 with the whole Calvin Ridley thing in Jacksonville. But I don't think, say, Jones is done at all. And again, I don't think he moves the needle in a massive way. But I do believe, say, Jones actually would bring some some solid experience to an NFL wide receiver room that doesn't have it beyond its top two guys. Because not even Tolbert has the experience. Like it's CD, it's it's uh, Brandon Cooks, and then afterwards, you don't, don't really know what's up with Jalen Tolbert. And we know the Cowboys like him because they wouldn't, they maybe would have prioritized the position a little bit more where they skeptical about Tolbert's development. But we have not seen it yet, regardless. So there's some risk there. 24 career catches is risky, whether we like it or not. And then Kevontae Turpin, who we know has somewhat of a ceiling. Like, it, it's a low ceiling because of his body type, because of all that. Uh, he isn't really that established number three wide receiver guy that you want. Because you want somebody that is much more versatile than what Turpin is. And that's fine. It's just, I'm just laying out the wide receiver room for y'all. Then it's Jalen Brooks, who, like, man, obviously we don't know we don't know enough about him. Uh, we're hoping that he takes that next step and becomes a more consistent member of the game day roster after being inactive for a good chunk of his rookie season. And then there's Flournoy, who is a rookie, and not only that, but he's a low floor, high ceiling type rookie because you're betting on the traits, physical traits, but he didn't really play at an NFL level at Southeastern Missouri. He's just that wide receiver buddy type for the NFL that the Cowboys hope to develop. And the same goes for all of the other UDFAs. Like, we're not betting on Jalen Moreno, Cropper, David Durden as surefire players. So depth and experience would be welcome in Dallas. Let's see if it happens. Maybe, maybe by the time you see this based on the Martavis Bryan release, it all, it, maybe it already happened. We don't know. Let me know in the comments if you like or dislike the potential addition of, say, Jones. Are you for it? Are you against it? 
Looking forward to seeing your comments. And I'll see you live tomorrow at Thursday, 8 p.m. Central. Even my dog got excited about the potential live show. So you already know where to find me, man. I'll see you tomorrow night live, and we'll talk some Cowboys football. Bye-bye.